So a lot of my long-time viewers know that I try not to be too critical of subject matters with these videos, and I try not to address too many criticisms or engage in fan debates or stuff like that. We try to be nice around here and respect everybody's favorites because chances are, you know, I'm drawing your favorite sometimes and drawing somebody else's favorite sometimes, and nobody wants to hear their favorites trash talked or whatnot. There is, however, a, a, a train of thought that is very common among monster fans or snobby movie critics or general moviegoers that I need to address here. So a lot of people are under the impression that the only Universal Frankenstein films that are any good are the first two and that only James Whale was capable of making good Frankenstein films. Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein are very much critically lauded. They've gone down in history as some of the most influential, famous, popular, money-making horror movies ever. And people love them to death. That's totally fine. But a lot of people then go so far as to dismiss what comes afterwards. There's a train of thought that says all the Frankenstein films that were not directed by James Whale were garbage. There's that quote from the movie Gods and Monsters where I think he says, I only directed the first two. The ones afterwards were directed by hacks. That's my really bad Magneto voice. Bear with me. And if you're under the impression that only the James Whale ones are any good and that the ones that came afterwards are not, then you're really missing out on a lot of good stuff. There is a film that I personally regard as the very best of the Universal Frankenstein films. Films, and it's the first one that came out after James Whale had left the director's chair, and that is Son of Frankenstein. So Son of Frankenstein does get a lot of criticism, chief among them Karloff's role in it. And yes, of the three Universal Frankenstein films that Karloff did, this probably is not really his weakest performance, I want to say. It gives him the least amount of to-do, I understand that. Some people argue this was the beginning of just using the monster as an instrument of revenge or mindless destruction, which he did end up becoming in the sequels, that's fair enough. All of those claims are definitely true, but there is so much actually going on beyond the monster itself in Son of Frankenstein that is so fascinating. I wouldn't go so far as to say the monster is just a MacGuffin, but a lot of the real meat and potatoes of the story is going on with better characters around him. First of all, Basil Rathbone's great. He is a very complicated character. He doesn't always do the right thing, but he's also very ambitious and so driven with what he wants to do you can't help but follow him along. What's better than Basil Rathbone? Lionel Atwill as the one-armed Inspector Krogh, who definitely leaves an impression on you, especially when he gives that speech about meeting the monster as a child and having an arm torn out by the roots. What's better than Lionel Atwill? Well, the star of our video today, Bela Lugosi, and probably the very best role of his career, the demented Igor. The character of Igor has, of course, become very much of a stock trope. Everybody seems to think they know what Igor is. Igor is the hunchback assistant of Frankenstein who says, Yes, master, and digs up bodies and delivers the brain and stuff like that. Everybody knows that. Well, no, they don't. That's not what Igor is at all. A lot of people, of course, are confusing Igor with the character of Fritz, played by Dwight Fry, who was also a very brilliant actor and also another alumni of Universal's Dracula, who was back in the 1931 Frankenstein. I have no idea at what point the two characters cross paths in people's minds. Maybe it was some random issue of Famous Monsters, maybe it was some critic report, or maybe it was, who knows, any number of Frankenstein parodies that came afterwards. But for some reason, Reason, Fritz and Igor got combined or confused in people's brains, and unfortunately, a lot of Igor, the true Igor, has been lost to time to a lot of people, except for the most hardcore of monster movie fans. And of course, those fans will know that Igor is a goddamn good character. He is crafty, he is sneaky, he could be genuinely scary at some times. He's also a very smart character, too, even though you initially take him as an idiot just because maybe his mannerisms are kind of comical, his speech patterns are a little weird. He's, he is genuinely nuts, but the more you watch this film unfold, the more you really are impressed with just how devious this character is. He's actually really, really a damn good villain. And of course, Bela Lugosi is completely at the top of his game with this character. There is no trace of Dracula. There's no trace of any of the, of the things everybody seems to think they know about Bela Lugosi with, you know, mad doctors and aristocratic counts and things like that. No, he's just completely buried himself in this character, and it's an amazing performance that really deserves more recognition. Igor, of course, got one more appearance in the follow-up Ghost of Frankenstein, which is probably a story for another day the next time I draw Lon Chaney Jr. And after that, well, 
Igor lived on in a strange sort of confused stock character. As I said before, the character of Igor shows up in a lot of places. He's been parodied many, many times. In fact, we'll be seeing one in the next video.